Hello, this is Dr. Oxios with the Podiatry Doctors. Um, today we're going to be going over some very basic wound care. The dressing that I'm going to be showing you in particular, in my opinion, is excellent because you could use it on almost any person. And before I go any further, a shout out to my main man, Henry Kenneth, for the motivation, big guy. If the patient you are dealing with has an allergy or sensitivity to iodine or betadine, uh, you can technically use like a gentian violet. Um, I'm using very few products here. Again, this is a very basic dressing change, which I love about it because almost anyone could put it on. Uh, now, there are a lot of different types of wounds we deal with. Um, sometimes we'll deal with pressure wounds in diabetics or non-diabetics. Sometimes they could be venous wounds. They may be traumatic wounds. They could be wounds um, that occurred over the weekend because of a lot of walking around Disney World or something like that. Surgical wounds. We, we deal with a lot of different types of wounds. And uh, so this dressing in particular uh, should be used if you're in a predicament where you need to cover the wound up. My suggestion is once it's wrapped and covered, uh, you contact your wound care doctor and you let them know so that they can uh, examine the wound afterwards and make sure everything is okay. Many times we deal with wounds that are caused by pressure. The way that she'll know that it's a pressure wound is because it's normally over a bony prominence or an area that's under a lot of friction and pressure. And that's not always the bottom of your foot. Obviously the heel, the bottom of the toes, or the balls of the feet are very common areas. But sometimes you may see it on the top of a knuckle, especially in a dorsally contracted toe that might rub on the top of the shoe or on the inside of the ankle over one of those bony bumps known as the malleoli. You could also get them in the back of the heel very commonly, especially in older patients that don't move as well, they can develop what we call pressure ulcers. The way I like to deal with those pressure wounds because the dressing is very affordable and it's easy for the patient to reproduce is with good old fashioned gauze. I will take, here's five pieces of four by four. What I'll do is I'll take three of them. I could fold that in half the way you saw me do there. And then with my bandage scissors, I can cut out a little hole depending on the size of the wound and now what I've created with two cents worth of gauze is a little offloading pad. Now before I dress the wound, let's say the wound is here on the inside of her ankle, now I can take this hole and I could place it over the wound so that with these layers I can put whatever product or medication I want to. For the purpose of this video, I use betadine. I can place it over the wound now, and after I wrap it, I know there will be less pressure on the wound. Now what I'm doing here is putting my light betadine dressing over the wound. Remember, the wound is still exposed now, because if you look here closely, if the wound was on the bump on the ankle, we're pretending it was right here, that offloading pad isn't covering it, it's exposed. So when I put this betadine layer on it, I am not going to douse the dressing in betadine because betadine is very caustic. The idea is I'm putting a few drops here and then I'm letting the medication spread throughout the 4x4 so that when I open it back up, it's a much lighter diluted brown. And when you put that over an open wound, it tends to be much easier on those good live cells that you want. Now, one of the reasons I love betadine, aside from the fact that it's very affordable, is that it doesn't have anything in it that makes it antibacterial or antifungal or antiviral. The chemical itself, the element, iodine, and the way it's made in the solution is caustic to anything that it touches. So if it's a fungal infection or bacterial infection or anything, betadine is excellent at keeping it at bay. Now, if it's far beyond uh, just a, a local or superficial infection, putting some betadine on the wound isn't going to clear up the infection. But for just maintenance, betadine really works well. Another important point is that anything that's living, whether it's a bacterial cell or a blue whale, requires water. And something else that's excellent about iodine or betadine is that after you've put it on an area and it's had a chance to sit for a while, it dries out the area really well. And a dry wound uh, makes it very tough for bacteria to grow and spread. Not that it's impossible, but it's much better to dry it out. For the purpose of this video, 
we don't want a wet wound. Wet wounds can go from zero to 100 really quickly, and that's dangerous for a patient. But a dry wound, for the most part, is a stable wound. Maybe it requires more moisture to help it along its healing process. However, if, it, if it's dry, there is a low chance that it's going to go the opposite way quickly. And that's not the case for a wet wound. If you have a wet wound that needs to be dried and it's not dried, there's a good chance that that moisture becomes fodder and a perfect environment for bacteria to multiply and continue growing. So again, I'm gonna go over these layers really quickly with you. We had just the cutout. We're pretending the wound is here on the bump on, her, on the inside of the ankle. We put the offloading pad right there, our two cent offloading pad. We put our betadine layer over the wound so that it's touching the wound. And then one clean layer over that. From there, we go to our cling or our Curlex or whatever gauze wrap you have. And we are gonna go ahead and wrap it. And I'm gonna make her hold up her leg. We're gonna wrap it very lightly. I am not putting any compression there. The last layer, and this is optional, I like to use a very light self-adhesive layer. If you wanted to stop here and put a few pieces of tape, you can with a sock or something, in, in my opinion, to protect it because this is porous. If it gets wet, even if it doesn't get wet, uh, over time, dirt can get into this bandage. And when you use something like this, uh, it tends to be one more layer of protection. Again, if you ever do use it, especially because it has a stretch to it, you have to be very careful about compressing. As I go to lay it down, I'm not pulling and laying it down. Just with a very little amount of stretch, not even 20%, I'm laying it over. As I come around, I hold it, I stop, I let out some more, and then I go ahead and I wrap it again. Don't cut any toes off when you're cutting the bandage. And voila. If you do a dressing like this, I am not saying this is the correct dressing, and I'm not saying this is the dressing that you need indefinitely to heal the wound. However, this is an almost 100% safe dressing to put on pretty much any wound that I could think of. I hope this helped. Uh, contact our office if you have any questions, and please follow us on social media. Peace.